does the Lacey Act promote the illegal trade in timber and lumber and make it even more profitable? The Lacey Act, formerly known as the Lacey Act Amendments of 1981, stands as a cornerstone of wildlife trade regulation in the United States. Originally enacted in 1900 and significantly expanded in 1981, the Act prohibits the trade in fish, wildlife, and plants that have been taken, possessed, transported, or sold in violation of any law. This encompasses a broad range of regulations, including federal, state, and even foreign laws, as noted here in the Philippines. The Lacey Act serves several critical purposes in protecting wildlife and ecosystems. It combats international wildlife trafficking by prohibiting the import of illegally obtained wildlife and plants. This removes many of the incentives for unsustainable practices in source countries. This act further strengthens existing federal and state laws within the United States, protecting domestic species by making it a crime to knowingly sell transport, or possess wildlife or plants harvested illegally within the United States. Additionally, the Act helps to curb the introduction of invasive species by regulating the introduction of foreign wildlife and plants, such as the palinia trees, preventing the establishment of invasive populations that can disrupt ecosystems and harm native species. The Lacey Act further prohibits the importation of raw lumber and timber that is not grown on a plantation specifically for the purposes of exportation, making it a driving force in many of the illegal trade practices in overseas nations. The Lacey Act attempts to achieve its goals through a combination of import restrictions, record-keeping requirements, and enforcement mechanisms. Wildlife and plant imports require permits to verify the legality of their origin. Additionally, commercial dealers in wildlife and plants must maintain detailed records to demonstrate the legal acquisition of their products. Violations of the Act can result in significant civil and criminal penalties, including fines and imprisonment. The Lacey Act's impact on wildlife conservation has been substantial. It has contributed to the decline in illegal wildlife trafficking, the protection of threatened and endangered species, and the prevention of invasive species introductions. However, the Act continues to face challenges such as the difficulty of monitoring international trade routes and the ongoing need for global cooperation to combat wildlife crime. The reach of the Lacey Act extends far beyond U.S. borders. By prohibiting the trade in wildlife and plants obtained in violation of foreign laws, the Act encourages international cooperation in wildlife conservation efforts and promotes sustainable practices on a global scale. As is far too often the case, these American laws, more properly seen as the laws of the United States of America, adversely impact people around the world, especially as their many allies seek to unify and support their legal systems for the purpose of more coordinated change in international trade. Certainly, this does make sense to some degree, but consideration also needs to be made for the real-world variables that are far too often completely overlooked when these laws are being written up and voted upon, and this is especially true given the contrast between developing nations, third-world nations, and the more industrialized nations, such as the United States. Many of the laws of the Republic of the Philippines are written not necessarily with the cooperation of foreign interests, but certainly in adherence to many of the standards for international trade and trade partners as established by the United States. In the case of the Philippine laws regarding the export of timber, these have taken the requirements of the Lacey Act to the next level. While there is certainly a need for these laws and restrictions and a pressing need to stop the devastating impact of the illegal lumber and timber industries, these were not necessarily very well thought out or planned either in the U.S. or in the Philippines. And that segues us nicely into the ugly truths about the unintended consequences of these laws and their detrimental effects that in fact encourage the continuation of the illegal lumber and timber trades not in any single location, but around the world. The market for foreign-made arts and crafts in the United States is substantial, with an estimated value of several billion dollars annually. This sector comprises a wide array of products from handmade textiles and ceramics to intricate wood carvings and furniture, reflecting the diverse cultural heritage and artisanal skills of countries around the world. However, the Lacey Act, while originally intended to combat illegal logging and protect endangered species, has had some unintended consequences on this trade and within the related industries. By imposing these strict regulations on the importation of certain types of wood, the Act has 
inadvertently at least, push some industries to relocate their production facilities overseas where regulations are less enforceable. Bishop allows manufacturers to circumvent the restrictions on raw materials by producing finished goods abroad and then exporting these products to the U.S. and other industrialized markets, further strengthening the profit margins for the corporations while at the same time avoiding many of the detrimental impacts of these U.S. regulations. This industrial migration has contributed to the gentrification of manufacturing sectors in developing countries where the cost of production is often lower. Unfortunately, this has also exacerbated the illegal trade of precious hardwoods such as teak and mahogany. The increased demand for these types of lumber fuels the illegal harvesting practices, making them even more profitable, particularly in regions where enforcement of environmental regulations is weak or underfunded or where the forestation, the existing woodlands, are so vast that it makes it virtually impossible to properly manage within the constraints of existing budgets and other limitations and restrictions that are inevitably going to occur in developing nations and in third world countries. The illegal trade in hardwoods has grown alongside the market for foreign-made arts and crafts, driven by the high profit margins these activities offer. Companies involved in these practices can sell finished products at a premium while at the same time financially benefiting from the lower cost of the illegal timber. As a result, there is a continuous cycle where increased demand leads to more illegal harvesting despite the introduction of more stringent regulations aimed at curbing such activities. This dynamic creates a very challenging environment for regulators and conservationists. While laws like the Lacey Act aim to protect vulnerable ecosystems and promote sustainable practices, they can also drive the industry towards more covert and harmful practices. The persistence of the illegal logging and trade driven by economic incentives underscores the need for comprehensive international cooperation and innovative policy solutions to effectively address these issues, such as the allowance for the exportation of raw timber and lumber by the Philippines to other nations where top dollar can be demanded, especially for the veneer logs from the palanir trees. As we noted in the last two videos about the reforestation efforts and ending the trade in illegal timber and lumber, it was noted that equally valuable veneer logs from the palanir trees can be grown and harvested in as little as eight years, with many additional environmental benefits and fewer detrimental environmental results. However, the most profitable markets for the veneer logs are those from foreign markets. This is going to be true across the third world countries, across the developing nations, and true still for all the industrialized nations. While our foundation does not even want to consider becoming politically active in any sense of the word, in the interest of environmental and social sustainability, systemic sustainability, systemically sustainable human growth and development, there is some consideration for the benefits of lobbying, at least to the extent that the existing laws can be sufficiently modified to allow for the export of raw timber and lumber, primarily in the form of the veneer logs. With such revisions being successfully passed, these raw goods can command higher prices and, at the end of the day, benefit the local economies much more than they do with the current limited addition of legitimate jobs, driving up the demand for continued illegal behavior in the host nations, including, but definitely not limited to, here in the Philippines. We are not anywhere close to the stage of operations as of yet, but given the many added value benefits, both socially and economically, to the Philippines, as well as environmentally, the ability of the host nations to return manufacturing and other related industries back to their own nations, the creation of additional jobs here in the Philippines, it would seem as if these solutions produce nothing but winners all the way around and that in addition to the environmental, economic, and social benefits is what systemically sustainable human growth and development is all about at the end of the day. So. Again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, we'd love to hear from you. And in the meantime, thank you. Bye. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment below.